Although I never plan on running a belt drive, you at least want to know that you could if you wanted to. On a street hemi block or a Cali's block, you're going to have to do a lot of grinding on the inside here for it to fit. So be sure you're ready for that. And then on the Cali's block, especially because it's capable of being raised cam machined, there's going to be a lot of grinding here. I think on a street hemi this is smaller and I think it fits okay. But you just want a test fit just in case you ever, you know, you can't do this later. You can't have a complete engine together and spend two hours grinding in here and putting all that in your engine. That's not going to work. So this worked out okay. Got a little bit of clearance and uh, it's fitting up flush. So, so it's all good. On these dial pins, I'm going to use a cutoff wheel and shape. We know it's too far this way. And I'm going to shave a little flat spot right here and here. And then keep test fitting and test fitting. <laughs> keep shaving until we have enough clearance. By the way, I found my notes from when I measured a street hemi a year and a half ago, or whatever it was, and it was 19,686. And if you take the 246 dial pins off of that, you come to 19,440 naturally. But so that's what it's going to be. We're going to do the fix here, and this checked out okay. I'll be knocking in the cam bearing soon. I've got to read the directions on how to use that cleaner. And it, you know, when you use uh, Loctite and sealers like that, you know, you have to read the directions. Uh, I see people putting Loctite on bolts and then they stick them in a, an oily hole, oily bolt. Well, I don't know if that works. I'm not a chemist. I, I would assume it doesn't work if you don't have clean threads and clean bolt and you know. I mean if you actually want the stuff to work then follow the instructions you know. And since this one's a little too big we want it to work. Okay I've got the dial pins ground down after many tries of trying the heads off and on but and I tried all the different heads everything fits I just had to take some off the inside because they were six or seven thousandths too tight this way but that's fixed but one thing I was wondering I think when people talk about CNC boring a block and correcting a block they after they get it in the machine, they have to have something to go by, and I think some of them go by the dial pins. Now, I don't know how you would CNC bore something if the dial pins weren't in the right place, so I'd have to think about that before CNC boring a Cali's or a KB. We uh, had some helpers yesterday, and we got the cam bearings in. I went with these Durabond PDP-17s because they were listed as Babbitt and I think of Babbitt as being more conforming and since we had a few issues here I used them and they worked great. I, I thought that being Babbitt or listed that way that they would be easier to mushroom and have problems getting the cam in but none of them mushroomed and the cam went right in, so I thought they were great. And the number four, that was a foul bigger than the high side on the bore, I was worried about having enough press fit in there. But it had plenty of press fit. I don't think it would have I don't think it would have slipped at all if I hadn't used that super glue. But we got that done, we got this one in, everything's fine, everything's wonderful. So I'm happy with that. I kind of did the rest of the deburring on the block, little things here and there, like any block you'd buy from anybody. 
Of course, all of this has done very well anyway. But there was a half a dozen of the lifters. When they got down to the bottom of the lifter boss, there was a burr there, and the lifter wouldn't go down any further. So I used this just by hand because it's kind of tight in there and to get that burr off the bottom. And some of it I couldn't get, so you just tear off a piece of emery cloth and sand that burr off there to where the lifter will go up and down easily. I know you could have hammered them in there, but no, we're not going to do that. But, so that worked out fine, and I've got most everything kind of touched up a little bit. It's all looking good. There was a problem with the, oh, I didn't realize there was a problem, but the distributor drive bushing. When the block got here, I noticed they didn't have the longitudinal groove in the bushing. It had the, this here, but I assume that that groove is what lubricates the shaft underneath the gear. And I've never seen one without a groove in it, and I, I didn't know... I didn't think anything about it. You know, these blocks don't come with any instructions. You know, if it if it had instructions and said, you know, we use this without that group, I don't know. So I just said, well, surely they know what they're doing and we'll just leave it like that. But then later on, I thought, well, I ought to stick something in there. After we test fit the cam, I had this drive that I used for test fitting. And... I stuck it in there, but unfortunately, it it doesn't go in. So, I said, well, you know, maybe, let me try another one. So I went, and that was a Mylodon drive. So I went and got this Mopar drive, and the Mopar drive slid in there okay. And I said, well, okay, that's, you know, that's good. Uh, but then I got to thinking, well, what I ought to use is the drive that I'm going to use with the motor. So I went and got that drive, and it was oiled up good, and it slid right down in there, and I said, well, that's what matters. But that's not what matters, because if I, and it's a, it may have been a Mopar drive, but if I decide later on that I want to run a, a steel flat tap it or a roller or something like that you know I'm going to have to swap be able to swap drives and I don't can't buy a Mopar drive anymore so you're going to be buying a Mylodon right and so it's got to go in there so and I think we talked about this on that build last year but it it's worth going over again these drive bushings, there, there is, I built an engine decades ago, and the, when I tried to trick the drive bushing in, it, uh, the uh, drive in, it was too tight, way, 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 way too tight. And I didn't know what to do. There's no good way to resize this afterwards. I mean, you don't have a, whatever that is, a 487. You don't have a 487 reamer, so you can forget that. So you don't want to use sandpaper. The sandpaper, by nature, has grit in it. And Now, I did have a buddy that drove one in with a hammer, but I wouldn't recommend that. And I had another guy that told me to start it up and just hold it on the floor, and, and it'll free itself up. But no, we're not going to do that. So we're going to have to change the bushing out. And when I built this engine decades ago, there was I had a new Keith black block laying there. And I said, why do I get the feeling, this is under the old regime, why do I get the feeling when I walk over there, this distributor drive is going to fit in that block perfect. So I walked over there and stuck it in. Yes, it fit perfect. So that got me to thinking, what is he doing different than what I'm doing? Why, why does his work and mine don't? 
And that's when I had to do a bunch of research and find out that because there's a proper tool to installing a Mopar bushing, you use their driver, this a Miller C3053. And when you do that, when you drive the bushing in, and that's going to squeeze this from the interference fit, that's going to squeeze this down a little bit. And when these two sizing rings, when you pull this back through there by tightening this nut, you're going to pull those sizing rings back through the bushing, and that's going to size it perfect. And I've never failed doing it this way for the size to be perfect. So that's what I'm going to do, just drive it out. Of course, there are several ways when you've got the engine like this. You know, you can take it out multiple ways, but you can just make a little tool like this, drive it right out. But that's what I'm going to do about that, and then we're going to be getting pretty close. I'm about to take the block outside for final cleaning before assembly and I just couldn't resist mocking up this oil system one more time of course I don't get to use this pump and pan because the number one header tube interferes right here but I, I will find a way to find another set of headers that will work because this is the pan and pickup I want to use this pickup I didn't have a 90 outlet down there, so I, I'll have to, I'm getting a little interference here on the header. So I've got to br bring this in some, hopefully the fittings I've got coming will bring it in over to here. And that'll straighten it up a little this way too. And this, this dash 20 line, you know, uh, it's flexible enough. I don't, I think it's going to work fine. It's, you know, we really don't need a top fuel oil system on a, test stand but I don't care it looks sexy so you know you have to get what you want right I guess you have to mock up even things you're thinking about using because this oil pan looks like it's hitting the number five studs by about 15 thousandths here which in theory the pan gasket will be thicker than that, but you just kind of wish it wasn't uh, touching so close. I might want to, I can spot that with a little mill or something just to make you feel better, but uh, hopefully the pan gasket's thicker than that, but you wouldn't want to find that later. <laughs> 